Okay guys, we're at a field that gets lots of iguanas on it. The guy, the kids have trouble playing sports on the field because of all the poop from the iguanas. There's three giant ones out on the field. I'm gonna run out there. I don't really expect to catch one, but I'm gonna run out there and see if I can grab one and see what happens. He's already watching. I'm gonna leave my phone right here. Got you going. Hold this, I'm gonna get the other one. Sound like you kind of winded, huh? Sure. He doesn't try to snap me. His friend is like, what is going on? There's a good eating iguana. He still has all the edible parts of his tail, even though he's broken half of it. And our Trinidadian friend is waiting for iguanas. She's having a barbecue this weekend. She says carnival is coming up. Okay, we're gonna go after iguana number two. I'm gonna tell you my thinking behind it. He's not gonna run away from us the other way because there's no trees over there. He's always gonna come back towards us. So even though I'm running at him, he's gonna run past me at some point. So, where's he gonna go? He wants to go to those palm trees on that side. It's like three of them. Or he wants to go to these trees that we're standing next to right here. Or he wants to go where that one went, which is under the fence over there. If it gets under the fence, I'll be messed over because he can go under and I can't get him. Only reason I grabbed this one was he actually got his head stuck in the fence when he tried to get through. So, let's see. I'm gonna try to run to his left, to the left-hand side to push him that way because I think I can get him in the palms. But if he gets in this uh, bush, I can't, I won't go on. Okay, I'll try to cut him off. Oh, just stay here. It's a baby one that way. I'll be able to probably outrun him. He's right here, climbing up the tree. He's right here. He's at the feet. He's right there. I got him. Taking care of his back legs. I'm coming. Okay. Okay. How's it feeling you? Nice snag, Jermaine. I'm out of breath. For what? Let's go. Come on, let's get oh, out of this. Oh, man. man. This is the endurance games, ladies and gentlemen. 
Yay! The third one sneaking up. Hey, the by the bite you. Stop holding them to your face. Gonna get you, gas station iguana. Ha <laughs> Got you gas station iguana hanging out at Cumberland Farms. <laughs> what are you doing here? You're not welcome at the gas station. You're not allowed. Is it a girl? It's a girl. I got a use for you. Got you iguana. Yeah, a curly tail was. The gama's on this side. No, he's not way up there. He's back there. Back on the ground. He's all, he's all the way back down here. Um, pretty positive they're from Africa. It's like an African rock lizard. They're known for jumping out the air and snagging bugs out of the air. And they've really increased in population this past year in the area. I actually hand caught a baby last time I was at this location. And now we caught an adult male. So we're going to pull them out of here because clearly the population is increasing. But uh, just to show you real quick, sometimes their head shows a beautiful red color. This one's a reddish brown. And this guy's showing great purple coloration on his back. And when they haven't lost their tail, they'll get red to their tail just like their head. So, got you a gamma. Wow. I hope he looks as purple as he really is on this video. So this guy is bright purple. Especially right there around his front shoulders. I mean bright purple. Focus for me. There we go. Red-headed Agama. Okay guys, we of course had to show you this awesome spiny tailed iguana we just caught in the trap. Has a full tail, but is showing some major green coloration. Young spiny tails, like when they're first hatched, oftentimes show bright green. This blue jay is just having a fit. So 
they oftentimes show bright green, but never after about like five, six inches body length. This guy is way bigger than we've ever found one showing green at all, much less nearly solid green. Look at this, he even has green feet, green legs. He has blue hues to his bottom jaw and around his neck. I should say she, I think it's a female. She even has blue-green on her uh, neck flap here. It's almost like a dewlap that they get. The orange is mango from uh, her eating the mango out the trap. Look at that, like blue-green all around her. She is just gorgeous, so got you, spiny tail. Check out my awesome two-tailed amoeba. Dun, dun, dun. What happened, buddy? Look, he has his original tail with the green and blue on it. And then a second little brown tail right there. Kind of long for two tails. Two-tailed amoeba. Okay hey friends, I'm at Chick-fil-A and this is a minor bird. He's from Asia and he's related to starlings, but they're way smarter. This bird can actually learn to talk like a parrot and they are problem solvers. I usually see them in pairs in Miami, but in the last year or so I've started to see them showing up in Fort Lauderdale and the rest of Broward County. A common minor bird from Asia. Okay guys, it's loud around this equipment. You can see how spiny tails have totally dug out under the equipment and they're gonna have some slabs cracking pretty soon here. It holds these important pumps. But this guy, or girl I should say, is coming out for pieces of fruit that we're throwing to her. So I'm gonna throw her a piece of fruit, see if I can keep her distracted, and then noose her with the pole. See what kind of throw we can get in here. Oh, she likes that. Okay. So let's see. See the pole? We got to get over there to walk over and pick it up. See, she'll let us get it. Without freaking out on me. Shoot back on the hole. Just wanted to show you all this brown basilisk. Um, I'm in the same spot that I just caught the uh, baby Agama. And this basilisk appears to be piebald. He has a white belly with a speckling of brown scales. This is not an impartial shed. Like, this is not like a, a partial shed or something like that. This is like a, this is skin color, y'all. Look, he even has it on his throat scales. It's like piebald for a brown basilisk. Look at that. Yes, indeed. We'll see if we can find somebody who wants him. Got you, basilisk. Okay guys, we're here at a, a customer's house that oftentimes gets baby iguanas because they really like to eat this plant with the orange flowers. 
I don't know the name of it, but it's a really soft bodied plant. It even has a green stem to it that just snaps. And so the iguanas eat it up. And uh, they also have a fantastic Maine Coon cat in the, in the window. So, um, anyway, these baby iguanas just take over whenever a nest hatches. They all hang out in these people's yard, especially compared to the others, because we even work for the neighbors. And uh, so we throw down glue traps only in the moment. We don't like glue traps. They're, of course, something that could catch native wildlife and things like that. So we use them in the moment, and then we take them with us. So just now we laid a couple glue traps down, shook the bushes, and Jermaine said we were getting so many of them we just had to get a video. So let's check out the glue traps. I haven't even looked yet. Oh, that's ridiculous. So this is the place I got 21 in about 10 minutes last year doing this. So let's pull that because you can see one's already panting from the heat. Grab that. Oh, I'll grab it. Oh my goodness, we even have one by the tail. So we'll put all of these iguanas down immediately. Now let's get them in the shade. That sun heats them up fast. So get them to cool off in the shade. And then we have more that tried to escape past this year. Some of them ran over that glue trap and then hit the secondary glue trap here. You can see they're all facing I just one heard direction. another one in there running around. Still, with all this that we've trapped. All right. This is the problem with the guanas, the reproductive rate. How many you can get in your yard. These were the ones that ran over those and still got past. So we've done this enough here to notice set a few extra traps so that doesn't happen. And then we have, I think, three or four more on another trap on the end, but he said he heard some. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this one with only two and set it up in the bushes so they aren't too hot. And we're gonna shake the bushes again and see if we can't catch a few more. Okay, so here's the fourth trap. This was the trap we set behind us. So any of one on this trap actually got past us, ran behind us and tried to escape out the back way. So we got two on there. So I'm gonna leave that trap there because it's clearly working. And now we're gonna shake these bushes starting on this end. I heard at least two or three babies down on the other end and I see movement right here, look. Right here. You heard him hit the ground? That's mm -hmm. why this cat sits here. He watches the baby iguanas all day, look. He's like, you're taking my iguanas. All right. You gotta shake your foot down at the bottom too to make them so they'll drop down when you shake the top. That was one just hit the ground. And then you gotta make him run to one end so he'll hit our glue trap. Put this one on the ground right here too. I'll be on the outside for me. He's right here. I just want him to go in the main bush. You can shake this portion out. Kick with your feet a little too. Oh, baby, I know all the native ones. He's right here. These people keep a native yard, so they try to keep the invasive species out. Did it. Hang on, I'm gonna shake. You have to shake a little bit further over here, or they'll just sit in the back side of the bush. Here I'm hitting the uh, metal. There, now look at our glue trap. It had two babies on it before we set this down. We got four more. Look, this guy has blue stripes. Holy cow, look how pretty he is. He has blue stripes. Out of all those baby iguanas we just caught, none of them have blue stripes like him. Wow. Isn't that cool? Look. Look at all these iguanas. None of them have blue stripes like that one right there. All those iguanas. And then Mr. Blue Stripes. He doesn't even have black stripes on his tail. He has blue stripes. Look at his tail compared to the others with their black bands. Wow. There we go. That's a lot of big iguanas.
Whew. All right. That's still not the other. Yet. That's still not the other. The last trap that's on oh, the end over right. here. Hang on. Let me grab one more trap. Let me see if I have another blank trap. Okay. Let's see if I can find one. All right, guys, I got a new one. This is a baby red-headed agama. He has like greenish colored polka dots on his head and an orangish sheen to his side, if you look right there, around his rib cage. It's very, very small. This is a red-headed agama hatchling and I'm in Hollywood, Florida. These are somewhat new to the area. They weren't here just about three years ago. And uh, I found a couple of adults this past year. And now, of course, I have hatchlings showing up. Got you a gamma. And a noosed in the tree. He's right there. His train's holding the string. Let's see if we can't get him down. I'm just going to hold the phone in my hand to see what happens. What? I know, I know. Oh, you're gonna put it down? Okay. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, he's mad about it. Ooh, he's mad about it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. He's biting, he's biting. Let him bite it. Hang on. Got him. Ha ha ha. Got you, big boy. Look at that mouthful of grass eating up the native plants. Don't trust them. Spiny tailed iguanas, big boy. We've been trying to catch this boy. Got you, iguana. Got him both. Oh, he got off the wire. 